So Adam, thanks very much for a great presentation today as part of the seminar. Um, you touched on for quite a few good clinical uh, relevant facts around gluteal muscle function. Out of the gluteal muscles, what would you say one of the, is there a key muscle of them that's maybe related to pathology? Um, so in terms of related to pathology, we know that um, both glute med and glute med do um, suffer dysfunction, but also um, reductions in muscle size and structure. But probably one that really stands out would be glute min. Um, we know that glute min reduces in muscle size, but also um, uh, gets a lot of fatty infiltrate as well um, in conditions such as hip osteoarthritis, following total hip replacement, um, lateral hip pain, um, and as we age. Uh, but um, of those, we also know that glute min is um, divided into uh, segments. It has anterior and posterior structurally unique and functionally unique segments. And of those, um, anterior glute min tends to atrophy and get fatty infiltrate more so than posterior. So if there was um, an avenue for targeted rehab in a lot of these conditions, certainly um, uh, anterior glute min might be a, a component that we could look into. Cool. Both you and Tanya presented some great stuff around different exercises and how they influence EMG and muscle function. Um, some common ones that clinicians like to use, I'd love to hear your insight. I'll just name three and maybe you can provide some insight. One is the clam, another is a single leg squat, and another more recently is isometric exercise. So discussing the importance of each of those three around addressing gluteal muscle function. So um, clam, single leg squat and isometric exercises, I guess, have been proposed for a range of um, conditions. Um, obviously the clam is thought to target, uh, or is, is thought to be a general gluteal exercise, specifically um, targeting posterior glute med, potentially glute min. Um, but we did a, a, a study looking at a, a series of common rehab exercises, I think it was five or six of them, um, and uh, we weren't getting too much activity in, um, in any of the um, glute min, so in uh, anterior glute min, for exercises such as clam, single leg squat, bridge, um, and so on. But basically, uh, the exercises that we were, we were getting most activity in were, were basically exercises where you're in, a, um, in say, a, a, a single leg standing position with resisted abduction extension. So where you um, are stand, standing on the testing or exercising limb and perhaps taking a TheraBand out into abduction and extension provides a, a lot of um, or high levels of muscle activity for most portions of glute min, or sorry, all portions of glute min and glute min. But um, yeah, something like a single leg squat and a single leg bridge don't really do a lot for um, anterior glute min in terms of muscle activity. You're getting sort of around 20% or less of activity um, in terms of maximum voluntary contraction, which is um, some people consider to be negligible um, and minimal. So um, yeah, there's still more work to be done in um, targeted rehab, but a lot of common exercises don't provide um, the level of activity that we think we would need for um, muscle hypertrophy.